All right, in this quick tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the color mixer brush to create some really nice, almost three-dimensional type right in Photoshop. So I'll create a new layer, name it something like swatches or paints, whatever you'd like to call it. And then I'm just going to paint a couple of marks on there with different colors. And once you get a feel for the effect, you'll see how uh, vertical versus horizontal, um, slanted, different colors, different thicknesses, all of that will affect the outcome. So that should be fine for the example. Now I'm going to switch on my brush. Underneath that is a tool a lot of people don't use called the Mixer Brush Tool. It is very processor intense though, so be warned of that. Uh, Right now it's loaded with whatever your foreground color is, so blue for me. I'm going to hold Alt and click to load it with those paints. And I had sample all layers turned off so that I don't get the background in. Now if I just make a mark, you can see it's all of those colors on the brush. So that's why it's very processor intense. Now all you need to do is write with it. See if I can get something somewhat decent. This is looking pretty bad actually, but that's all right. You get the idea. Wish the uh, Y was a little smoother. Here, let's let's try one more time real quick. That looks a lot better. All right, so once you have that, which already looks pretty cool to me, I would recommend and I'll rename this to Ryan or lettering whatever you know obviously Ryan because that's what I wrote lettering whatever helps you always good to rename your layers now I'll create a new layer and hold alt on my keyboard and in between and that makes it a clipping mask and I call this one shadows and then I'll switch with shift B to my normal brush lower the flow down to about five my brush reset to black and white and then using the black I'll come in and just add some shadows to this and that will really help the effect as you'll see in a second when I turn it on and off. Same thing I could then add another layer clip it as well call it highlights and I might use the white brush and Let's see, to show you something else while we're at it, let's change it to Dissolve, and we'll get kind of this speckly look. And that's pretty cool. I, I kind of like that for this. So we can add some speckles to it. Maybe we'll want a little more over here. Maybe now I'll use regular brush as well, so it's not just that speckled look. And what the clipping mask does is keeps it on the text. So that's why I'm not getting any white or black on my background. So perhaps something like this. And when we zoom out, and I don't really like how the dissolve looks, but that's all right. <laughs> I'm not going to redo it for the example. I'll turn off the background for a second and turn off the swatches. Now you can see the huge difference that the shadows and the highlights make, even with a pretty ugly dissolve. I probably shouldn't have done that. Uh, it looked nice in one of the earlier ones I had done, but here, not so much, but that's okay. So you can see though the shadow, how much that enhances it. Now in, this was just with freehand writing. What I can also do, which has a lot of benefits, is use the path tool. Now I don't want to take long making perfect paths or anything. But I could do something, you know, say like this, and maybe here, I don't know, sure, that's good enough for the example. And now we switch over to our mixer brush because it will get cleared out when we were using 
the black and white, the regular brush. So we need to look at our swatches and again load it. So I have that on there. There we go. And I can switch back to my pen once it's loaded. Make sure I'm on a new layer. And I can stroke this, but switching from pencil or brush, which you probably have it on, to that mixer brush tool. Obviously this was very quick, so not the cleanest as far as paths go, but the benefit to this is I could now say I want to try a different color palette. Maybe I just want to invert my swatches. I'll go back to the mixer brush tool and load the new colors, create a, another layer, go back to my pen tool, and I could again try this stroke the path. And maybe, maybe I also want to, before I do that, let's make it even bigger, which makes it a bit more processor intense, but that's okay. And I will again stroke the path with the new colors. Now I can turn off that path. And you can see the difference. So I could compare and decide, all right, which one do I prefer? So that's one of the benefits of using the path. You just have to realize then you're not just you know, free-flowing it with your drawing tablet. You have to rely on getting smooth paths and Bezier curves, perhaps going into Illustrator to create it and bringing that into Photoshop. But have fun with it. There's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with that mixer brush tool. Enjoy, and I'd love to see what you create. Thanks for watching.